I have finally received my 2024 Common Planner by Sterling Inc. And in this video, I'm very happy to show it to you to discuss the differences and similarities with the previous year Common Planner and also reflect a little bit on the advantages and disadvantages of this planner that I've mentioned in the video that I've made um, at the beginning of the year. So if you're still not sure whether you want to order from Sterling Inc, I hope this video is going to help you decide. First of all, let's see what I ordered last year and what I ordered for next year. This is a B6 full year planner, which means that it has 365 blank daily pages at the end. This one is a B6 compact, which means that it does not have 365 blank daily pages. It only has 120. And that is the first big improvement for me because in the previous review video, I've mentioned that I personally don't know what to do with that many blank daily pages. So I wish the brand came up with a version where it's less than a page for every single day. So I'm very happy about that. Another thing that you might notice is the color of the cover. And again, last year we had less options. It was only black and uh, light pink and the golden edge papers and papers, pages. And this year we have more colors and I went with this gray, bluish, beautiful color and white edges. So I'm very happy with my choice. I hope it will be my only planner this year in the same way as this was my only planner in 2023 because I'm a one planner person. So I hope it works out. Now, quickly, let's discuss the main differences. And the first thing is the most obvious is the cover. And as you can see, I keep pushing this cover to the side because as soon as I took it out of my Motorm cover that I keep it in, it was like this because the 2023 cover was just way too thin and I was not happy with its quality. And this is something that I've mentioned in the previous video. This year, I think that it's visible even like this. They have the cover that is probably three times as thick and I even would make an attempt to use it without the Motorm. So just get the transparent plastic cover and just keep it like this because it's very thin, it's very nice and I just would like to try it out. And I think this is doable this year because this one was a little bit too thin and too flexible and I don't really know what I'm going to do to keep it nicely on the shelf you see because the edge is not is not really hard enough so that's one big difference that you can see straight away the layouts inside stayed exactly the same you have the yearly calendar then you have your blank page the goal breakdown quarterly spreads monthlies, weeklies, and dailies. So that stayed the same, but there are a few tiny differences which I view as improvements. The first one is the font. Not sure if you can see, but okay, let's open this one. But I feel like it became darker. So this font is bold, this one is not, and in general the lines and everything, it became a little darker. I think it's fine, it's still a very nice clean minimalistic design, so I don't mind it at all. Here we had this little grey background of the top row where you have your days of the week. Here it's blank, so it looks a little bit more consistent. I think that it's fine. Um, it doesn't make a big difference for me, but I feel like for people who are struggling to see yeah, these very thin grayish numbers, I think this would be a huge improvement. So the layout is still the same, maybe the color is a little darker and it's cool. 
the biggest change for me in terms of the layouts was this. So again, you see the font is slightly brighter, slightly bolder, but then it looks like you have more space to write because have a look at these numbers. Yeah, so the numbers are being the part of the column. So you cannot write here. Yeah, you would just lose this one, one square. Um, again, those changes are very small. I think that the brand is being very careful with the feedback, so they want to hear what people are saying. And for me, it's, again, not a huge deal, but it's an improvement because it feels like there is more space. So, yay. Um, nothing else really has changed in terms of the planner. So I still think it's a great planner. But there are a few things that I would like to mention. The first is the box. So it came in a box like this. It looks as the folder. Um, I'm not sure if this is reusable. I'm, I think I'm just going to throw it away. But it's a beautiful, beautiful package. However, this is the box from the last year. And the fact that I still have it <laughs> tells you that I'm actively reusing it. It's thicker, it has a very different um, structure, and I can put it on the shelf. And it's very nice. I use it, as you can see, for my little collection of postcards. So I really preferred the box from 2023. But... The box is just a nice bonus, so I would prefer the brand to put more money into the quality of the cover and the quality of paper and the planner design, maybe some extra goal spreads than in the box. So it's a subjective opinion, of course. It would be nice to have another one this year, but I'm not very upset that I don't have it and instead I have this. Another thing to mention is I believe that last year there were also some uh, stickers and a little card that says thank you for your order. And this year um, it's also there. There was a little envelope and these were the stickers that came with a planner. And I find them really, really nice, really cute. So that's also a um, nice bonus from the brand. And I believe it's an advantage. Last year, I've mentioned um, several advantages of the planner, such as minimalistic design, um, the size that is smaller than A5, also the goal setting spreads and so on. So this planner has all of these advantages too, as well, of course. But it also, I believe now, has another advantage, which is just more options. I don't like the brands that have too many options and too many choices. I like the ones that have the style. I'm, I'm talking about planner brands specifically right now. So I think that it's nice to have more options in terms of the covers, the colors, the sizes. This is great. And the cover right now is an advantage for me because it's very nice quality. I will still keep an eye on how it's going to hold up because this, yeah, you see. So comparing, for example, with um, Habonichi Kazen, yes? So this one holds together a little bit better than this one. Yeah, this, I believe, is just worth mentioning. So conclusion about the cover. Last year, the cover was a disadvantage. This, this year, it's an advantage. Then, I've also mentioned the big amount of the daily pages as a disadvantage again subjective for me because I don't really use the daily pages that much so I'm happy that this year there are options that's why I got the compact planner and I've also mentioned the size is both an advantage and a disadvantage so I like b6 it's a little bit more difficult than with an a5 or a6 planner to get the covers and the accessories in the EU, at least maybe I cannot find them, but I see more options in the US, but not that many in the EU. Um, so let's see where I'm going to get my uh, transparent cover from. But I think that is still valid. Yeah. 
But in general, I don't really have anything purely negative to say about the planner, at least not from my first impression. The only one thing, which is rather a wish, not a complaint, is just something that I've started recently thinking about. Before I joined the Hobonichi cult and now the common planner cult, I was the part of the bullet journal cult, which means that the organization of my planner was slightly different. So I followed this classic bullet journal setup where you have your monthly spread and then you have your four weeks and then you have your days and then you have the next month and then you have another weeks and days. So this is something that I wish was an option for the common planner. So for example, there is January and then there is the first week of January, second, third, fourth, and then there are dailies or maybe all the dailies together at the back, which would work better for me, but then months and weeklies, next month and weeklies. So it's just a wish. I don't know if they're planning to do that. There is no way for me to find out. I might leave the comment uh, under one of their videos just asking, yeah, I probably should do that because it. I think it would be nice. I know some brands are doing this, but those brands usually have either another um, type of paper that I'm not a fan of, so I prefer to stick with the Tomo River uh, paper planners, or they have um, horizontal layouts, which as I figured out in one of my videos, I'm not a big fan of. Um, yeah, let me just quickly show you. I tried to plan my week both uh, vertically and horizontally. And yeah, I just, I just came to the conclusion that vertical weeklies is something that I, that I like and that works for me. So I love the planner. Uh, let me know in the comments if you bought something from Sterling Inc. Or if not, which planners did you choose? I am really curious about people who are using Habanichi Han. What are your impressions? Would you say that you want to stick with it and you don't want to come back to Kazen? So that's, that's my question to you. If you're somebody who is doing that, please let me know in the comment section. Or if you have found any other brands that you like also please let me know i'm planning to make a video on like top 10 brands that use uh tomo river paper hopefully i'll post this week and definitely this week i will also do the setup of this beauty and i hope that you enjoyed the video and then you join me for the next ones so thank you for watching and have a great day